In this video, we'll get more familiar with the Cambrian period and the Cambrian explosion that occurred within its bounds. The Cambrian period is important from the perspective of our history because it's when the phylum of Cridata, which we're a member of, came to be. But the Cambrian period is important for many other phyla, or the basic higher order forms of animals, as well. The majority of the basic forms of animals, or phyla, first show up in the fossil record during this period. The advent of the Cambrian period is recorded in the rocks by a group of trace fossils that show new behavior of certain animals. This first phase of the Cambrian explosion is marked by burrows that are deeper than the more slight burrowing of the Ediacaran world. The second phase of the Cambrian, which followed, leaves behind the seeming massive increase in biomineralization. Many tiny tenth of an inch long fossilized fauna that look like shells come to us, and these are collectively called the small shelly fauna. So we see that already in the second phase, that biomineralization, where creatures process material and secrete them as hard parts or minerals, is now on the scene in an increasing way. But it's the third phase, starting some 530 million years ago, that gets the most attention, and rightly so. The third phase is when much larger creatures, one reaching as long as seven feet, come to be. Biomineralization takes off in a bigger way now as well, with many creatures, some 15 to 25 percent of the animal biosphere, having hard parts. The exoskeletons of many trilobites are a prime example of this. Those are made from the trilobite secreting calcite, but biomineralization in the form of teeth, shells, and eye lenses is occurring as well at this time. Another change you'd notice in this biosphere is the movement of the animals. While some creatures moved relatively ineffectively in the Ediacaran, by now plenty of movement is going down. Deposit feeders are making their way across the sediment floor, burrowing has leveled up in depth and complexity, and a number of creatures are swimming. But the most significant change is that by the time the third phase is over, the majority of the modern animal phyla had come to exist. Let's take a look at some of the phyla that had already existed and then the phyla that came to be during this period. By the time the Cambrian began, Cnidaria and Periphera had already existed. Cnidaria is the phylum to which corals, jellyfish, and sea anemones are the three members, and sponges make up Periphera. A nice example of a sponge from the Cambrian is Voxia, and it's a sponge which, like all other sponges, sucks in seawater from its sides, traps organic material in the body, and then releases the water out the top. Unlike the Ediacaran sponges which preceded Voxia and the other Cambrian sponges, some of these modern sponges are bigger and rise up to 11 inches from the sediment surface. Next we have Mollusca. Mollusca, whose members include snails, clams, and cephalopods, may have preceded the Cambrian as well, with some arguing that this animal from the Ediacaran, Kimberella, that Kimberella's radula demonstrates it to be a mollusk. But whether or not Kimberella is an actual mollusk, Mollusca were definitely around in the Cambrian. Now let's move to things that we don't have any evidence of them coming to be prior to the Cambrian, but we know that they exist by the time the Cambrian comes to a close. One, brachiopods um, came to be during the Cambrian. An example of a brachiopod is a northern lampshell. The arthropoda came to be as well. The arthropoda includes insects and crustaceans. The echinodermida, which includes sea urchins, starfish, and sea cucumbers, and the hemichordata, which includes acorn worms, terebranches, and graptolites, both of those came to be as well. And lastly, there's our phylum, chordata, into which came to be the vertebrates, into which came to be you and I. And the chordata begins appearing in the fossil record at this point as well. Beyond the various forms that came to be, many of which would be with us to the present day, the most striking dynamic of the Cambrian is the increase in hard parts. While the majority of species from this third pulse of the Cambrian are soft-bodied, those with hard parts stand out. They stand out for one, because of the relative ease with which they are fossilized makes for a much more populous record of them, and in fact for a while it was only the hard-parted animals that were known about. But the second reason it stands out is because it speaks to a change in the biosphere that would send chills down the spine of any animal so lucky to have one. The rapid development of hard parts across multiple species is tangled up with the increasingly dangerous world the animals lived in. From the remarkably peaceful world of the Ediacaran, where most larger biota were in no danger of being the food of another, we're now in a very different world. We now have predators and prey.
Let's take a look at some prominent examples. We'll start in the sediment at the ocean floor. Curled in a U-shape underneath the sediment, a priapulid worm, a toya, stuck its proboscis out above the sediment surface. With its armed with teeth proboscis, a toya grabbed certain unlucky creatures making their way above. One species found inside Otoya's guts are hyoliths. The hyoliths were likely just grazing the bacteria on the ocean floor when they met their end. Moving to the sediment surface, a number of newly defended prey animals are noticeable. Aside for the many hard-parted trilobites, Waxia is plated over with a hard surface and then further protected by protruding spikes. Hallucigenia also has spikes running along its back. These new hard part based defense systems speak to a radical change in the relationship many animals shared with each other by this point. But not everyone was unsatisfied with this reality. Moving up in the water, we find swimming an animal that got along just fine with these new dynamics. The apex predator of the Cambrian explosion, Anomalocaris. Anomalocaris would use those appendages near the head to grab and shovel animals into its odd mouth, which is lined with teeth all around. Bite marks found on certain trilobite fossils are thought to have originated from the mouth of Anomalocaris. This monster reached the relatively epic size of 7 feet long in some places. From now on, peace would never reign upon Earth. The fall from the Garden of Ediacara was complete. With the work of the Cambrian period completed, the biosphere looked very different. Gone were the stromatolites and microbial mats that had dominated the majority of life's history. Those had been banished to regions where they could live without being eaten. In other words, places where the rest of life had not yet reached. For the time being, the intertidal zone was a safe haven for them. But with time, the intertidal zone would be colonized as well, and the only remaining safe place for the stromatolites and mats became extreme environments where other life just can't tough it out. Instead, the world was beginning to look more like our own. Most of the basic shapes of life had come to be, although the land remained utterly barren. In the next video, or a couple of videos, I hope to consider the story of vertebrates and how they took to land. It's thanks to those that made the journey before us that we ever ended up here at all.